this video, we will be discussing the brachial plexus and its associated vascular structures. The brachial plexus is a complex set of pathways through which spinal nerves fuse and split into the peripheral nerves that will ultimately provide the motor and sensory innervation for the entire upper limb. To orient you to what you're seeing here, this is a right upper limb and you're seeing the anterior face. So the shoulder is here, superiorly or proximal. The elbow joint is down here, inferiorly or distal. This is the medial side and this is the lateral side. And what we see right here is an excellent view of the brachial plexus. Now remember that the brachial plexus is organized at various levels from proximal to distal. We can't see the roots of the brachial plexus in this prosection, which consist of the spinal nerves C5 to T1, but we can see, starting here, the trunks of the brachial plexus. So this is the superior trunk, or the upper trunk, this is the middle trunk, and this is the inferior trunk, or the lower trunk. The trunks are each going to split into either an anterior or a posterior division. And all of the posterior divisions, which you can see here, here, and here, are going to fuse together to become the posterior cord of the brachial plexus here. The anterior divisions of the upper and middle trunks are going to fuse here to become the lateral cord, and the anterior division of the lower trunk is going to continue here as the medial cord. Remember that the cords of the brachial plexus are named for their orientation to the axillary artery, which you can see very nicely running here, right in the middle of the brachial plexus. You'll see that the lateral cord is lateral to the axillary artery, the medial cord is medial to the axillary artery, and if we had this in anatomical position, the axillary artery would actually be over the posterior cord here, so the posterior cord would in fact be posterior to the axillary artery. I find that it's really useful when orienting myself to the branches of both the lateral and the medial cords to think of the branches as forming sort of an M here, a sideways M, but an M nonetheless. The lateral leg of the M here, which receives fibers only from the lateral cord, is the musculocutaneous nerve, which is going to innervate a variety of muscles in the arm. The middle leg of the M here is the median nerve, and the median nerve, as you can see, is receiving fibers both from the lateral and the medial cords. And then finally, we have the ulnar nerve here, which receives fibers only from the medial cord. Now, the median and the ulnar nerves are going to go down the arm without any branches uh, because they serve their functions only in the forearm and the hand. If we retract the lateral and medial cords to really well visualize the posterior cord of the brachial plexus, we'll see that there are three major terminal branches of the posterior cord. The first of which that we see is the axillary nerve here. And if I try to get a good view of where the axillary nerve is going, we can see that it's branching deep into the, into the axilla and into the posterior component of the shoulder joint. And it's going through the quadrilateral space in order to innervate the deltoid and various other muscles in the posterior shoulder. This nerve here is the radial nerve, also coming from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. And the radial nerve is going to dive into the posterior component of the arm, or the extensor surface of the arm, where it has multiple functions, both sensory and motor. The last nerve I want to talk about is here. This is the thoracodorsal nerve. The thoracodorsal nerve is going to branch inferiorly from the posterior cord and innervate this muscle here, the latissimus dorsi muscle. And we can also see very nicely in this prosection the thoracodorsal artery, which is running here, off of the subscapular artery, which is a branch of the axillary artery. And the thoracodorsal artery is going to provide the vascular supply for the latissimus dorsi muscle.